Hello everybody and welcome back to another video in this Pygame tutorial series. Up until this point in the series, we've already created something that looks really much like a 2D run and jump game. We have a small character who can move all over the place, who is animated, uh, who can even jump and also fire bullets. Now, in the last episode, we created the shooting mechanic and we talked about uh, a couple of things that we still need to improve with the shooting mechanic. The first thing that we need to improve is the fact that we need to delete the bullets once they move off of the screen. And the reason why we need to delete the bullets once they move off of the screen is that they take up memory and if we fire uh, for too long then and create too many bullets, then it takes up space in our memory and it makes the game laggy. So we need to make sure to delete those bullets. And the second thing we need to make sure is that we have a cooldown on the shooting mechanic because as you can see now, um, the player can shoot uh, the entire time without a break. Uh, and that is of course something we want to uh, avoid. So let's go ahead and implement those changes. So up in the editor, uh, I have the code where we left off last time. Remember, if you want to follow these videos by coding alongside me, then make sure to check out the link in the description below. There's going to be a link to my GitHub where you can get all of the code. So the first thing that we mentioned was the uh, deleting the bullets when they go off of the screen. So let us now go to the um, <coughs> the class bullet and let us make a new function that returns um, that allows us to determine whether a bullet is on or off the screen. More specifically it is going to return true whenever the bullet is off of the screen. So we're going to say define off off underscore screen and we want to now determine when a bullet is on the screen. So a bullet is on the screen when self dot x is greater than or equal to zero and self dot x is smaller than or equal to the window width, which is a variable which we determined or which we specified at the very top, we said that the window width should be equal to 800. Okay, so now since we want to return the value true um, uh, whenever we are off of the screen, we now need to put parentheses around um, the condition which tell us whenever the bullet is on screen and write not in front of it. Uh, so because we want to know whenever the bullet is off screen, so not on screen. So we are going to now return the value of that, return the value of that, and that is our function finished. Now we have to uh, move to the um, class hero and go over to the method shoot. And within the method shoot, we now want to delete the bullet whenever it's off screen. So um, we're just going to add it to this for loop over here. We're already saying that for bullet in all the bullets which are um, saved in this uh, list over here, we want to move all of them. Um, we're already uh, referencing all the bullets over here. So we might as well say that if one of the bullets uh, is not on the screen, then we remove it. So if bullet, um, if bullet dot <coughs> off underscore screen, then we want to execute the code that comes after the colon, which is going to be self dot bullets dot remove bullets. Okay, so now that should be something that works. Uh, but before I go ahead and run the code, let me just briefly go over 
what we have done for the people who have not um, looked at all the episodes in this series and to just give you a brief overview of how this um, feature works. So over here we have our class hero and it has several methods. One of these methods is the method shoot which um, says that if the user input is the key f, oh hold on now I'm changing the code which is something I don't want to do, um, so if the user input is F, so if I press the keybind F on my keyboard, then this uh, state, oh, hold on, then this statement, sorry for that, then this statement returns true. And when we shoot, then a new bullet is created. So a new object of the class bullet uh, is created and the class bullet is given down here. So we create a new object of the class bullet and when we create a new bullet, we also want to append it to a list uh, which is given over here. So the, uh, all the bullets are saved within that variable of bullets um, over there. Okay, so uh, once we have that going and the bullet is saved in that list, then we are going to move all the bullets across the screen. The move function is one which uh, we also made in the previous tutorial in episode 8 of the series where we talked about moving the bullet by simply incrementing its x value or decreasing its x value depending on what direction our character is facing. And now in the two lines of code which I've just added and highlighted uh, right here on the screen, we are checking if the bullet is off of the screen. Okay, so now I'm ready to run this and um, the thing is that now you won't see any change unfortunately because the bullets are in fact being deleted when they move off the screen. Um, but they are being deleted at the very edge of the screen so you don't notice any difference. But to just prove to you that uh, you can believe me and I'm not lying to you guys, I'm just going to make a small change in the code. I'm going to say that when the bullets move to the right hand side of the screen and they go past the value of 600, which is just before the screen ends, they get deleted. So now you should see a visible difference of the um, bullets being dropped just before they reach the end of the screen which is something, yep, you see really clearly now. Yeah, you can see that they are all being deleted. All right, so that is one thing which we uh, now have implemented. Let me just switch that back to the width. And the other thing which we still want to do is we want to create a um, cooldown mechanic for our character. So to create a cooldown for our shooting mechanic, um, we need to create a new class method uh, with our um, uh, in our heroes class, and we are going to write define cooldown. Cooldown, and um, the. The cooldown uh, first needs to be, oh, hold on. I first need to add the um, cooldown to the list of variables um, that our character has. So I'm going to say self dot cool underscore down underscore count. So this is going to be a counter and depending on what number the counter reaches, um, it is going to determine whether we can shoot or not. More specifically, when we count within a range, uh, within a specific range, we want there to uh, not be any shooting. And when we reach a certain limit or a certain threshold, the cool counter resets and we're allowed to shoot again. So now we need to make sure uh, that this mechanic is implemented in this function. Uh, which we've created in the cooldown function. So we're going to say that if self.cool underscore down count is greater than or equal to 10, then we want to reset the counter. And um, when the counter resets, we can shoot again. So cool down count is equal to zero. And it, L if um, self.cool down count 
is greater than zero. So if the cooldown count is greater than zero, we want to increment the value of the cooldown. Self dot cooldown count plus equals one. You'll see why um, we do this in a second. So now in the shooting uh, function over here, we need to make some adjustments. The first thing we need to do is we need to call the function um, cooldown. So self dot cooldown. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to say that if if the cooldown count is equal to zero, then we can shoot. So if we're pressing F and if the uh, self Oh, hold on, there's an easier way to do this, of course, if I just go ahead and write and uh, cool, cool down uh, underscore count is equal to zero, and I'm gonna put parentheses around this. And of course, I also need to add a um, self before this. Uh, hold on self dot cooldown count. So if the user input is F and the cooldown count is equal to zero, then we want to allow our player to shoot. Um, and in addition to that, we also want to start off the cooldown counter. We're gonna write self dot cool underscore down count is equal to one. And this is exactly why I choose um, this elif statement um, which we wrote before. Because as soon as the cooldown count is greater than zero, which is exactly the case when we have a value of one, then we are going to increment this counter um, until the um, value of 10 is reached. Okay, so then we have um, this cooldown count over here and we should actually be finished right there. So let me go ahead and run this code right now and let's see if we have not made any mistakes. <clears throat> oh yeah, and you see that the character can now only shoot when the cooldown is reached. So you can clearly see that the amount of bullets which he can shoot is uh, much lower than it is before. If we want to increase the number of bullets which he can shoot, then we can simply decrease the cooldown um, timer over here, and we can simply put the cooldown back down to, let's say, five, um, uh, the value of five, and then we can go ahead and press F, and you can see that the rate at which he can fire is faster, and then analogously, if we increase this value to a very high number, such as 20, the number of bullets which he can shoot is going to um, decrease again dramatically. So this is going to conclude our tutorial for today. If this video helped you out, make sure to let me know by leaving a like under this video. And if you want to stay up to date on the tutorial series, um, in Pygame, then make sure to subscribe to this channel. And yeah, in any case, I hope to see you guys in the next video.